I don't remember anything before living on Avenue Way. I was about four or five then, and that was in Flint, right during the Big Depression. We didn't have a lot, uh, but I, I know that it was really tight for my folks. It took the war to get the economy going. It had to be so economical. You couldn't make trips, you know, save the tires, save the lard from the bacon, if you could get bacon. We just saved everything. Mom and Dad were both working in the factory. I had to be the cook, and I did the washings. I was, what, 14? <laughs> not, not the best cook, not the best washer, but I sure grew up uh, with some responsibility. He came home on leave a couple times, and he looked so good in that uniform. <laughs> and we'd go to a movie or something, and he'd borrow a car. Then his letters got pretty personal, and then he asked me uh, if he brought home a ring, if I'd take it. And he was too good to let go. <laughs> Usually, if I wanted something bad enough, he'd find a way to get it for me. All except a swimming pool. <laughs> he would not buy into that. <laughs> and I told him one day, I said, well, if you can't do that, at least promise me you'll bury me at sea. <laughs> One time, we were in Las Vegas, and we were going to a casino, and they had this little shuttle. It was crowded. So I got on. There wasn't room for Ben, so I had to go. <laughs> then I started worrying about what's going to happen to Ben. I don't know how we got so separated, but <laughs> when we finally found him, he wasn't upset at all. He was playing a dollar machine. <laughs> he could always make me laugh. And that was wonderful. Uh, he had a sense of humor that didn't quit. Uh, and it was quiet. He was not a show off. But he, he was just good company. With Ben doing carpenter work, it was pretty seasonal. So we decided we'd put the effort into going into a nurse's program. And uh, man, it was worth it. I loved it. Really loved my job at McLaren Hospital. And especially Dr. Farhat. He was a neurosurgeon. And he liked me to scrub with him on cases. You could anticipate what he needed, hand it to him right. He never had to look up from his microscope. And we just had, were a team. And then they decided to move to the new hospital. So they asked me to manage uh, that department. And so I took the job. Although I remember Ben saying, you're not very loud. You can't even call the dog properly. <laughs> but I learned to speak up, and I learned to write reprimands, and, and I guess I was a pretty good boss because uh, I had that job for about, um, oh, 
14 or 15 years, so until I retired. I was 12 years old, I think about. Went to a church, Pentecostal church, with uh, some friends. And, you know, that's not my style. But I really heard about the Lord. And I, I really, I, I gave my life to Him at that time. Then I really wanted to be baptized. My dad didn't want me to, but I think it's the only time I ever disobeyed him. I took dry clothes and I was baptized. And, but my mom was supportive. And uh, I guess it made an impression on her. She might have been leaning toward Christian but I don't think she ever was involved in a church until after that. The tornado, I mean, that was pivotal in our life because we knew right then we better shape up. The Lord uh, saved us each one for a reason. But the one thing that I remember from that, when this Gordon Urbeck came up looking for us because of the storm, we had to walk about three blocks at least to his car through debris and glass and limbs and I walked barefoot through that, and I never had a cut or a scratch. And I thought afterwards, the footsteps of a righteous man, not that I'm righteous, but God sees me as righteous. The footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. He put my feet down and safety. I'll never forget that. One of the promises that I've kept through the years and reminded the Lord of many times is Proverbs 37:25. I have been young and now I'm old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. <laughs> <laughs>